Fly Atlanta, somebody go ahead and call Tori Williams because there's no way in hell Goshe thought that this was an actual black ski pool party. Y'all, let's get into episode one of Bold and Bougie on WeTV. <laughs> Hey, question crew, it's your girl Tammy. Y'all been asking, so here it is, and here I am. Let's talk about bold and bougie on WeTV, child. <laughs> Woo, Carlos King had another hit on his hands. I'm telling you, I cannot believe it. Anyway, let's get directly into this cast, y'all, because you know we've seen some of these faces before rotating on the reality TV um, lanes, and we want to get right into the episode. So, uh, Stark firm in the middle, I think, is apropos to show up our girl princess um because she really is like an og of reality tv princess banton lofters she's a successful talent agent she's a um you know business owner she was um the person that co-created and executive produced the real housewives of atlanta honey she is responsible for all of them before all of them was a thing she was a development producer behind it and she is also a co-owner with a business with her husband i believe her husband is a dentist named dr david um, but they co-own a dentistry business together. Prince has got everything going on, honey. And she is one of the now main cast members on this show. She has some type of connection to all of the ladies where she's met them sometime in their life. And they kind of all are, she's the branch holding everything together, honey. And we love to see it. Um, I don't know too much about her like marriage or anything like that. And we get on and on in that story as we go further into the episode. But Princess seems like she's going to bring us a lot of good energy, but a little bit of sobs sometimes unnecessary and sometimes repetitive, but I'm still here for it. Uh, next up in the left-hand side of things with the blonde hair is Miss Goshe Hawkins. And honey, she is not new to our reality screens. We have seen Goshe a few times. I'm starting to think that Go Goshe is a vampire, honey. Okay. Goshe is a successful uh, restaurateur, honey. And she is um, just like a girl about town. She's a successful hair salon owner and hair stylist. That's what we really first met Goshe. And that's what I remember her from. I don't know if you'll remember, but Goshe was the girlfriend to Lala's cousin on Lala's Half Court Life. I don't know if you remember that show back in the day, but you know, remember Lala, Car Carmelo Anthony had a show about their wedding and then about to get married and what Lala's life was like as a married wife. And it was on VH1 years and years and years ago. Well, on that show, Lala was, um, you know, spend a lot of time with her best friend and her cousin who happens to be a lesbian and she was a stud and Goshe was her girlfriend. And it was a whole episode about meeting Goshe, honey, because Goshe was a grandmother at the time that she was on the show. I think Goshe was in her late thirties. So I don't know how old Goshe is now, but she still looks amazing. And she damn near looked like she did 20 years ago, 20, 30 years ago. So I really need to know because I think Goshe is in her sixties, but I could be lying. It don't even matter because Goshe looks fantastic for her age. And that's all we need to know. So Ms. Goshe Hawkins is on here because she owns several restaurants and she has a very successful food bistro um, that she currently owns in Atlanta in a, a breakfast bar. And she's introducing us to her new line of home items and grits and things that she plans to roll out. Whatever Goshe hits is successful, honey. But I knew her from when she uh, was on that show and when she was also on Real Housewives of Atlanta because she was one of the women that Roger Bob dated <laughs> during that season with Demetria was on getting embarrassed. So Goshe is in the mix and she looks like she's going to be whipping up some good entrepreneurial spirit that we love to see. And she's going to be mixing up a little bit of messiness, which we love to see as well. Below her is Miss Crystal. And we know Crystal mainly from being um, married to R&B singer and man about town. And I mean about town all the time. <laughs> Neo. Crystal Smith is a restaurant owner and she's a mom of three. You know, she was married to Neo in a very like tumultuous divorce, marriage, get back together, marriage, get back together, drama and finagle situation. But Crystal in that time did not waste her time just being his wife. She did open up a business or two with him. And I believe Johnny's Chicken or either the other business that she has is co-owned by her Neo and fellow reality show, uh, I'm sorry, reality show alumnus Carly Red. I believe they either own Johnny Chicken together or they own another restaurant, but I think they have more than one location. Anyway, Miss Crystal's on here. She's trying to start her life back and get over the Neo baby mama situation and move on from her ex. And I don't think they're going to let her do it. They're going to drag this all season. We can already tell. Next up, speaking of dragging, we have Miss Malaysia Pargo. And of course, we know Malaysia from 
uh, basketball wife. She you know she's an entrepreneur. She's a mother of three, similar to Crystal in that way. But she was used to be married to obviously Janario Pargo, who we barely remember that played in the NBA. And let's be honest, we really know Malaysia from Basketball Wives. She kind of got her name and her bones in that show, and she became a personality in her own right. We forgot her husband was like a two-bit uh, NBA player from back in the day. So. Malaysia recently did a sit down with Carlos King. They talked about her life. I'm sure it was the intro for this show. We love to see her because she didn't return for the last season of Basketball Wives because she thought they were going to set her up and they were going to set her up. Looks like the FBI set British up instead. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. We love to see Malaysia. And lastly, honey, bringing in full being Bobby Brown, Whitney Houston, smoky voice. I smoked the pack of Newport's drinking from a supper club energy <laughs> on a constant and regular miserable basis is Miss Tamika Foster Raymond. Oh, we are happy to see her. Not because we always enjoy her energy because Tamika is a full mess on reality TV. She is somebody who brings the ratings in whether or not you like her. So Tamika, obviously we know she was infamous, infamously the first wife and first ex-wife of the superstar Usher Raymond. She is a talented and very accomplished wardrobe stylist. She was before she met Usher. She was while she was with Usher. And she has been successful afterwards. However, I am looking for my $9.99 refund back because Tamika showed up late to a stylist event via Zoom during COVID. <laughs> and I want my money back. She really gave us Lauren Hill. And I'm like, girl, all you do is show on how to put polka dots with stripes and you showed up late and tried to use an energy thing. It's the reason why I never got my cash app back. Anyway, um, this is y'all cast and let's get on to the mess of this episode. Okay, so now that we've done the introduction, y'all, let's talk about this first episode of Bold and Bougie. Did y'all see Crystal in that? It's you and all of <laughs> In that booth, honey. Whoo! <laughs> I had to compose myself. Anyway, so we kind of already met the ladies and we know that Goshe is going to meet up with Crystal. Crystal is Neo's ex, as we talked about previously. And Goshe is coming to personally invite her to this theme party that she's having for another business, I believe, that she's opening up. And so they're sitting down and talking. And honey, what I tell you, this was the most hilarious, uh, delusional scene I have ever seen in my life. Lord bless me continuously with girlfriends who will support me no matter through all the stages of life. I feel like I have been blessed with that, but you always need a few friends that's going to act delusional with you. So Goshe walks into the booth as Crystal is rapping. Why we do not know. Uh, but I need more of it throughout the entire season because <laughs> it's you and all of it. <laughs> oh, where's JJ Fad? Anyway, um, Crystal is rapping and she walks in, says hi to Goshe. They hug, they sit down, and Goshe is shocked to see that Crystal was rapping. She said, Yes, it's something that Neo used to make fun about, probably because he knew better, um, which is why there was no EP. <laughs> but she does say to Crystal, like, she's shocked that she has this passion for rapping. And she says that, yes, she always enjoyed doing it. And at first he made fun of it. And then he heard her in the booth and he thought she was kind of good. She said that Eric Bellinger, the singer, gave her the, um, the, a rap name because O'Shea says, well, what's your name? <laughs> and she goes, it's VVS, you know, because she knows, I think shines bright like a diamond, something like that, honey. Um, it's not going to be a name we know, but it is something that she is, you know, I guess sort of a passion project for her. And um, she basically says that, you know, she she takes it a little bit serious. They sit down and have a conversation. She asks O'Shea what's going on. O'Shea mentions the party to her. And she mentions that she may invite Malaysia, who, um, Chris was never met and Tamika Raymond, who she's also never met as well. Um, she said that she doesn't have a problem meeting new people. And from what I remember and know, and I've heard about Crystal and seen on the internet and stuff, she seems to actually be a really nice person in person. Like I've never actually heard that she's like really negative. But of course we just watching the show for the first time. So we'll see how this season goes, honey. But People have personally said that they have met her and she's been a very likable, nice lady. So focusing back on Goshe, she says, yeah, you know, it should be okay. Like Atlanta loves a theme party and she's excited to throw it. I think she said she's going to throw it like Black Aspen. So I guess it'll be like a winter theme. And basically um, it shouldn't be an issue. Crystal says she doesn't have a problem with any of the ladies that are coming. She doesn't really know them like that. She knows that they're friends with Monetta and she says it shouldn't be a problem. I don't think her and Monetta have any personal issues. And she just basically said like, you know, as long as they don't have any issues with me, we should be fine. So Gaucher is excited to, you know, have this party and Crystal's excited to be invited. Is her and Nola? Now let me stop. <laughs> okay, child. So we done moved on now. We are being introduced to Miss Princess Bantam Lofters and Tamika Raymond. 
uh, with Tamika Foster, Raymond Honey, all these three middle names is getting to me. But either way, uh, we are introduced to Princess, and Princess is an entrepreneur. She's also a development producer. I actually do know who Princess is because I remember she was involved with the Real Housewives, and of course it says it on the screen. But I do remember that she was a part of the Real Housewives development production. And I know that she also has been involved in quite a few reality productions um, and development productions. She's also very good friends with Mariah. And I think at one point they were trying to, after Married to Medicine, they were trying to develop another series. I don't know if that fell through or not, but I remember that Mariah had posted her a couple of years ago. And they were going through like different uh, like discussions about treatments and things like that. So I'm happy that she's now landed on something new. Um, and Princess is letting us know that, you know, she does a development production thing. A lot of people don't know she was responsible, um, for like the inception and stuff like that and initial, um, casting all over Housewives of Atlanta. Also, she co-owns a dental practice with her husband and they have another business. So she's meeting up with Tamika because she's at a plastic surgeon. And so Tamika meets up with her and she says that she met Tamika when she was trying to cast for Real Housewives of Atlanta. She actually had tapped her to possibly be one of the people on the first cast. I remember Tamika said this years ago, of course we know Tamika is a stylist and she um, is an image consultant and she used to be married infamously to Usher Raymond, who was his first wife and they have children together. Um, and then she was on subsequently on a reality show after that. So um, Princess said that she was going to cast her, but ultimately Tamika moved to LA. And so they did not end up doing the show. Um, and then they're sitting down on the couch in the waiting room. And Tamika's like, hey, what are we doing at this plastic surgeon? And so Princess lets her know that back in 2015, she went in to do a routine breast reduction, which is a very routine surgery. And she woke up with no breast. Essentially, she had like tissue necrosis. They, all her breast tissue was gone. Like the tissue was dead. It was like a very scary thing. I, my heart completely went out to her in this moment because breast reductions, which I thought used to be like a standard thing that normally don't have any complications past just regular surgery complications. I'm just hearing so many things now from different folks I know about like things that have gone wrong. And it's like incredibly sad because you always think, you know, bad surgery is the opposite. It's just like breast, you know, a breast lift or even like breast implants or botch plastic surgery, you never think of standard things that happen naturally for women. Like people get breast reductions when they have breast cancer. Sometimes they have to get the breast reduced or tissue taken out or breast removed. So you're thinking that those things, hopefully outside of anesthesia, wouldn't have drama, but dang. So it's like a very emotional moment. And Tamika reminds her, like she does understand where she's coming from because remember she ultimately also had surgery. And we know infamously, like there were all these reports in the blogs that she had gone to Brazil and she suffered, um, I believe like blood clots and stuff in her system. And that caused her to actually go, I believe into cardiac arrest. And I believe she ended up dying on the table and then she was, you know, brought back up. And we remember ushering her at the time. I don't remember if they were still married or not. I think they were married, but they may have been having problems. And he had to like fly down to Brazil to go get her and stuff like that. So it was like a really dark moment. And she says she completely understands because obviously she died on the table. So she understands where Princess is coming from and her and Princess go into the doctor's office and she's there today to like talk about, I guess, the reconstruction of her breasts in total and there to get some filler because she wants her breasts to look normal like any woman really would. Um, especially when you weren't expecting to lose your breasts, you're just trying to reduce the size of them, child. And somebody in the busty committee, I totally identify with the idea of wanting to reduce your breasts, but the scariness about what she went through is one of the reasons I'm always like holding off. So um, she ends up, trying to get the filler as she's getting the filler Tamika starts getting negative about the fact that she's getting the filler and she's like girl should you even really care about it it's a cosmetic thing like you should be happy you just have your breasts and she's like yeah but I still want to feel like a woman ma'am why are you here okay why are you here if you're going to just be a negative Nelly in the procedure like girl I can see why he left you <laughs> I'm just kidding I'm not, I'm just saying and you know what's crazy is I know we haven't remembered Tamika before from the previous show that she was on with the attitude and I try to give her grace because I know when she got with Usher, people kind of went off on her, not realizing Usher like older women, because they thought like, oh, he was just dating this older woman. And I know she didn't aesthetically look like Chili. So for people, they were like, oh, why is he with her? But ultimately, girl, after they got, after they got divorced and we got to know your, your energy on that other show, we realized that we don't really like you. <laughs> anyway, we'll see how she annoys us this season. But basically, she was a negative Nelly. And I'm like, princess... You needed a better friend. So, child, here we back again on another meet in and mix up. You know, we're doing another meetup. We're doing another mix up with the ladies. And Goshe is meeting up with Malaysia. We all know Malaysia from Basketball Wise fame. 
And Malaysia is essentially meeting up with her zip lining. So Goshe is checking up on her. <laughs> she like, look, I ain't getting up on that tree. So she meets up with Malaysia and they have a conversation. She's saying how she met Malaysia years ago in LA. And Malaysia's really cool. She's happy she's in Atlanta now. Malaysia, she basically gets down to nitty gritty asking Malaysia like, hey, why aren't you on Basketball Wives? Now, of course, if you saw that long interview with Carlos King, she explained why she thought it was a setup and she wasn't feeling the energy of the girl. So she decided not to return him for the next season. She had some fallout with Brandy, who was her old bestie. And she essentially felt like she had evolved and she had a lot of other personal things going on in her life, which meant that Basketball Wives wasn't, wasn't a return for her. I understand. I don't completely believe it because I feel like Malaysia would have shown back up if her old school friends or really the old school OGs had come on the show as well because she would have felt like she had backup. Either way, it is what it is. British in jail, we've moved on. So um, Malaysia basically says that she's trying to really get acclimated here in Atlanta. She, um, you know, loves tapping into Atlanta from time to time, whatever that means. And she basically says that, you know, she's trying to get her kids acclimated to like their schedules and things like that. It can be hard transferring or traveling with kids in general. So for her, she feels like she just wants to make sure that her kids are okay first and that they're used to a routine that she can get down to because it's all about the routine, honey. And so she then turns around and says, you know, to Goshe, like, you know, I heard you're having this event and then Goshe lets her know she's having this event. That's a Black Aspen event. Um, she lets her know who's going to be there and that her Malaysia knows so many people, including Manyetta. And of course, Crystal and Manyetta will be uh, you know, have an affiliation with Neo um, and his dome head. And so <laughs> the ladies are like wondering how will that all work? Um, and then, you know, Malaysia says she's open, but she does want to let the girls know that she's a little bit socially awkward um, and that, you know, she may be a little bit more reserved and laid back and she doesn't want them to feel like when she doesn't come to stuff or isn't available, that it's always like a personal issue. And I'm going to say two things about this. One, I do feel like Malaysia is being a bit more transparent about that. I do respect and understand social anxiety and I have it myself. I think a lot of people I know have it on some level, but um, that can, you know, make you shy. Even when people think that you might be very verbal. And I will say that for the for part of the time, initial, in the initial beginning of her being on Basketball Wives, I felt like that was a valid thing that sort of came out of her personality. However, there's another side to Malaysia that I haven't always reconciled with that I think that she can be a bit phony sometimes. And that part to me, I'm wondering if it's going to come out on the show or if she's grown past it. So let's hope that she has, because I feel like when she feels like she is empowered amongst a group of women, um, specifically in a certain circle, she can sometimes take on those mean girl attributes. Um, but because she has a soft voice, it somehow relates differently to people. So I'm hoping that Malaysia has really grown and I would love to see that growth on this show because I already can tell who could possibly be the villains? And I don't think she's going to be one of them. Uh, fast forward, Malaysia then also meets up with Tamika Raymond. She it does know Tamika from uh, previous years. Tamika was on a date or a double date with her one time and she met her and they sort of engaged. And Tamika has pulled up to a house with a friend who was a realtor because she is now looking to move into a house. She said that she was moved back from LA to Atlanta, I guess. And she's in a townhouse, but she's currently looking for like a formal house. And she's been looking for about six months to find the perfect property because she specifically wants a house that is in alignment with like an Italian villa. I hear you, girl, Santorini all the way. So, um, oh, is Santorini right there? Mm, I don't know. It's on the coast. Is it really? it's, that's Greece. I'm sorry. We're talking about more Naples. We're talking about more, you know, beautiful coast vibes. And I don't know how you're going to get that in Georgia, honey, but go ahead. So Tamika has decided that she is going to, um, you know, try to find this, this house. They walk into the home. The home is large. It is a bit orangey bright, but she likes the bones of the home, you know, cause we're going to overuse bones if we can, honey. Once people know some real to speak, it'd be all the words. <laughs> so she said the house has great bones, but she doesn't love the color and she wants to judge it up. You know, she's a decorator. She's a decor. She's a creative. So she has some thoughts in mind of things she can do, but she's not really sure. So she contacts Malaysia to come over because Malaysia is into um, buying properties and she feels like a second hand and a second eye would be helpful in the process. And Malaysia comes in and gives her like a kudos on the property. She thinks it's beautiful as well and that it has great bones. She knows Tamika's capable of renovation, so she's not really worried about that. As they talk, they end up talking about Gaucher's Black Aspen party. And they start talking about, you know, what to wear and who's going to be there. They both, you know, reiterate again that they're friends with Manietta and that Crystal will be there. They both haven't really met Crystal and they don't know how that dynamic will work because they're really, really close to Malaysia. I mean, to Manietta. They also mentioned that the outfit theme is an issue. So with, I'll say with 
Malaysia, I understood it because her style has always been like up and down for me. But, you know, she has cute moments and then moments I'm like, ah. But when Malaysia understood it, what I didn't understand with Tamika is, girl, you a stylist. What do you, why are you acting like this is so hard to get around? What, what would you dress your clients in? And she's dressed multiple people. It was giving bougie and energy that was kind of nasty about the situation versus just like, go with the flow, girl. It's a theme party. You got invited. If you're going to show up, go with the flow, find a bikini or a, or a fur coat if that's the avenue you want to go to. But you act like Black Aspen doesn't mean you can't just dress like Aspen. You can give ski trip energy that is light because this is Georgia and it's hot. So why are you acting like you don't know how to prepare for this? It's giving messy. Now, while we talking about messy, and, and this is just a light moment, you know, we watching the show together. I know everybody saw what I saw when it came to Princess hair. When I tell you the thickness of the gel overlay, this is why Derek <laughs> was trying to tell y'all that lace fronts are not for all the time. Honey, when I tell you it was a shellacked celebration, I don't know. And then the hair is colored. So I always feel weird with people who have like brightly colored hair if the hair is blonde. Because sometimes when it's not like fully straight and they're done and you try to put gel on it, it looks older or the gel separates into different pieces. So it gives like a swirlish event. And so many times the princess was in there, I was just like, oh no, oh no. Between that and the makeup, it was like thing. And I actually really like her. She, I think is going to be one of the more likable people on the show. Of course, I, you know, we going to get to episode two in a minute, but, um, I just really felt like I didn't know what was happening here. And I was like, why didn't they tell her anything in the production? Because it was just, it was the, stop doing the close-ups on the hard gel because it was, it was, prob it was problematic. I, I hated it for her and she deserves so much better. Now moving along from the whole got to be moment, what I got to be is super proud anytime that I see a man supporting his wife, honey. We love to see it and we love to see a little bit of black love. And we also love to see a brother supporting his, his sister, okay? And that's all that's happening at this moment where Princess is talking to her husband, Dr. David. So Princess and her husband are having a conversation because she's getting ready to try to try on clothes for the Gaucher's party, Black Aspen. And she's got a couple people in the house that are helping her, like coming through with clothes, coming through with furs, helping her. Because I think she's going to go with the bikini fur thing. Or she's thinking about a different type of outfit to wear. And her husband walks in and he's sort of looking around. And Princess one of some very good points that I loved in her moment. She basically talked about how like, you know, she got to make sure you're on point in Atlanta. It is very true. People walk around looking immaculate when it's time to go to events. Um, and you will be called out if you look a mess. And, you know, that's in a lot of cities, but Atlanta is extra, you know, because it's like the land of black plastic surgery and everything else. So it's one of those things where like, you know, everybody's on, on 10 all the time for events. And it is a theme party, by the way. And so, you know, she's saying that, you know, it's very clicky. People start to ask you where you got this from. It's a mess. And so she just wants to make sure she looks on point. But she is a little concerned about her appearance because she has the breast issues. And she has scarring around her breast because of the different surgeries. She's had 11 surgeries. It is very traumatizing. And ultimately, it has left her really... Um, not confident about her body all the time. Plus, she mentions to Dr. David that, you know, Tamika was very insensitive when she was with her at the doctor's office. And we already peeped that. You know, she gave just a not comfortable critique about princesses, like wanting to up, grade or really to to put in the fillers in her breast just to have a little bit more volume and to feel a little bit more quote unquote normal again because of what happened to her. And I totally agree. I understand why she broke down. This person's supposed to be my friend. You're supposed to be here for support. And you are a mess at being supportive of other people. You find a way to insert yourself into the situation and we don't love it for her. Um, despite the crack on you know, Princess's hair, she absolutely seems like a, a sweetie pie. We're going to see as the show moves along, but I genuinely like her already and I feel really bad for how she felt. And Dr. Dave lets her know, look, don't you worry about these heifers. I'm here for you, even if nobody else is. You're going to look fantastic. You're going to look amazing. And where what the hell you want? And I said, that's what, I don't know that's what's right. So we slide on over to um, Crystal meeting up with her bestie. And again, as, you know, as I stated before, I knew Crystal was an entrepreneur. You know, I knew she had Johnny's Chicken. I know she has another restaurant, I believe. Not just Johnny's, but I know she has like another restaurant or bar is supposed to be opening up because I believe she co-owns one of her restaurants with her, with her husband, her ex-husband and, um, uh, Carrie, uh, ooh, I'm about to say Carrie Lisa, <laughs> uh, Carly Red from, um, uh, from Love and Hip Hop. They own a restaurant together. It might be Johnny's, but it might be another restaurant. I believe that they own together. It's supposed to be like a lounge bar opening up. Everybody opened up restaurants in Atlanta, honey. But Johnny's is actually a legitimately good food spot. And um, Crystal just talks about how she learned how to be, like just be more into her cooking phase because when she was with Neo and going through the depression and all of that, she was just trying to find herself and she found herself in cooking. And hence, you know, now they opened up this space. 
So she sits down with her bestie, Shad Santiago. Honey, he seems to be everybody's bestie, but Shad is always a good time because he's also friends with uh, Tammy Rivera as well. Like everybody know everybody in Atlanta, honey. But Shad is one of the, you know, uh, YouTube famous, more so Instagram famous, I think, or being like a funny guy online, kind of making skits and stuff. Really, really funny dude. And basically is there. And Crystal says her and Shad's relationship has grown and they've become very, very cool and best friends because during her divorce situation, Shad was one of the only people that showed up for her. Honey, if you want to find out who your real friends are, they always tell you find out when you're getting married, when you're getting divorced. Hell, when you're having a birthday nowadays, that's when you find out who your real peoples are. The, the folks that show up for you when it's not attractive, when there's no money involved, when they can't get no free tickets, nothing. And it looks like Shot was a solid person for her in those moments. It helped her out a lot with her children. So kudos to him for being a good friend. They sort of have a key key about what's going on and the fact that, you know, there's this constant thing being brought up about the fact that Chris was going to be interacting with friends of um, his ex's fiance. And it's one of those things that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me because I feel like everybody in Atlanta know everybody. So what is the issue around these two people knowing each other? Um, and in the meantime, Gauche trying to figure out what's going on with this party planning situation. And she's talking to her party planner about how she wants the aesthetics to look. They got this whole black theme. She's introducing these grits to everybody, honey. And she just wanted to go well. So let's see how this party ends. Child, so let's talk about this backyard black Aspen so soiree that wasn't. Honey, when I tell you, I was so disappointed. The way that Gauche talked up this event to us, I thought it was going to be the event to end all events. Black Aspen, this was a pool party. <laughs> There was nothing Aspen about it. It was black balloons in the water. Were y'all as upset as, as I was when I was watching this? I was like, girl, what is this? It was no fake snow. There was no chalet vibes. There was nothing that was extravagant about this except it had a black on it. It had her grits on the bar and them black balloons, child. Anyway, fast forward, you know, in walks princess early as ever. I love to see a friend that's on time. Looking very, very cute. She had a little lace jumpsuit on, white coat. We love to see it. Her outfit was very cute and appropriate. And it felt good for her because she is uncomfortable being in the baby suit at the moment because of her scarring. Cool, 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 cool. It was really boring until Crystal showed up because, honey, Crystal seems to be the life on these episodes so far. So Crystal shows up um, in her own thing and says, look... I am appropriate. Now, Princess, who is not wearing a bathing suit when really, I guess the party called for a bathing suit with a fur coat, because again, I don't really know where we're at, um, is upset that she, while wearing a jumpsuit, Crystal has on a jumpsuit. Crystal jumpsuit was cute, honey. And she like, look, I wore what I want to wear. <laughs> I think Crystal got the memo that this party was going to be whack because like, I'm just going to put on what I got on. So she's like, she's not even an outfit and she's not even in the theme. And it's like, girl, I have fur shoes on. That's enough. And I completely agree because it, this party was not worth setting up a theme outfit for because it was lame as hell. Who are these random people in the backyard? Like, it really felt like Goshe invited some cousins and friends. And it wasn't even influential friends, just to launch this, this line. Where Rashida and them? Um, Y'all all real cool. The, you know, where's all the bistro friends? All that. I was a little disappointed in um, that this party didn't have an overmatch. I felt like this was part of part, Carlos's production crew and possibly some of his friends that showed up to this because, you know, Kingdom Rain is, is producing it, child. Anyway... Crystal shows up, then in walks Malaysia. Now, Malaysia is here greeting Gauthier, supporting as well. Malaysia's the only one in theme, honey. She got a little white skirt with a little, I think it was a Louis Vuitton baby suit top with a, with a Gucci belt buckle. I think it was Gucci top as well. But my point is Malaysia was semi on theme. I like the baby suit top. The skirt, I guess it was to cover the bathing suit, but honey, I don't really know. And she had on a coat. So Malaysia seemed to be somewhat in theme. And you can see Princess was a little taken aback because Malaysia's bosom is fully risen and out. And, you know, I think she's feeling a little self-conscious again, you know, around some of the women because they are able to wear their breasts out. And it can be very, you know, at least wear a bikini rather. I don't want to say breast out. Malaysia was topless. Um, although she could have been in the party, still would have been not interesting. It really just was not popping. I'm disappointed because Gauche can throw a party, honey. So... She says, you know, she wants to pull Crystal to the side and have a conversation. Let's just get the air, you know, thinned out with this whole, I know Monetta, you know Monetta. Honey, why is Monetta the theme of this episode? I don't really get it. It's like, I liked Monetta on Real Housewives as well. If you go back and watch my reviews and I'll plug it up here, you'll see my reviews uh, at the end of the season about how I felt about Monetta on Real Housewives of Atlanta. However, Monetta did not even make it onto the show as a full-time cast member there. Y'all act like she was the main character here. This lady and her share a um, 
affiliation simply because they shared children with Neo. Marietta was engaged to Neo years and years and years and years and years ago when they were babies, you know what I'm saying? As far as being like in their early 20s. And Crystal was actually his wife at the end of the day. They were engaged, they broke up, Marietta moved on. Eventually she is now remarried. Crystal was the last person married to him. They did not intertwine in a relationship. She was not the reason for their demise. Neo was cheating with everybody. And I don't, I think he met Crystal was like a year or two after that situation ended. So it's not a situation where this is even up for question. And girl, it's been years ago. My is married to that white man now. So fast forward, um, you know, Crystal does not understand why the girls keep letting her know that they're friends with my I get it. I know that. Just introduce yourself with me. I love the way Crystal handled that. And I understand the annoyance this girl had with constantly y'all bringing up the situation. So, you know, I think she was a little, she wasn't really upset with Malaysia, but she was letting her know like, look, girl, get to know me for yourself. If you don't like me based on me, I could deal with that. But not liking me based on the fact that you are cool with somebody that I don't have necessarily have a problem with is another issue altogether. And, you know, Malaysia agrees, let's her know, look, I'm not upset with you. I'm not, I don't have a calm. I'm being calm with it. And I love the way that my, I love the way that Malaysia and Crystal handled this situation. It was very classy, very clear, and it ended it concise. But in walk, <laughs> good old Tamika Raymond to start the pot, honey. Um, and, you know, Gauthier standing on the bar looking fantastic, by the way. Let me tell you something. Gauthier really is a damn chameleon, if you know, you know, um, from a visual perspective. Because I want to say Gauthier, well, well, you know, I talked about it up front. So, you know, we'll continue to see as the season evolves. But Tamika Raymond walks in. And let me tell you, I really now narrowed down what Tamika gives me. It's giving me... Whitney Houston being Bobby Brown vibes. Oh, she's going to be amazing for the season. So Tamika comes into the party. She talks amongst the girls. She sees Crystal. She's not the only person she hasn't met. She says, you know, Mo is her dog. She got to make sure that Mo and her are good. You know, I just got to make sure, you know, Whitney Houston didn't have that scrapey voice when she was smoking cigarettes being brought around Bobby Brown. So, you know, that's how Tamika talk all the time in real life. So she ends up chatting with Gaucher about wanting to connect with Crystal real quick and just get things clear about who, you know, she is and what the situation is. So she ends up talking with Gaucher. And while she's talking with Gaucher, she ends up saying that she feels like hmm, she doesn't know how to feel because she's friends with Mo. And even Malaysia's like, girl, I'm friends with Mo yet too, but I didn't approach her like that completely in a way. She's like, you know, I, I know y'all was going through y'all thing. And it's like, she starts questioning her about the situation. And she's like, look, I don't have nothing to do with that. Basically what we just ran down just a few minutes ago. You know, this is between her and Marietta. They don't even have any beef. They have their own family situation and dynamic going on. Why are you coming in here like you need to be defensive for your friend? It's not necessary. She's not even on this show. And I'm a cast member on this show. Tamika then starts to feel reluctant that, you know, she even says something or she may have too many glasses of wine, honey, and says, you know what? I'm in your business. This is not my business to tell. I, I feel like I'm in the mix. It's not really whatever. I'm going to head on out. When I tell you she grabbed herself together with that Sherlin fur, <laughs> like the good drunk that she's acting out right now and pull about that party and everybody was completely confused. I knew it was going to be a good season. This party was a wrap. It was whack from the beginning. Everybody was dressed out of form. And I could already tell that we're going to have a messy goodness. Shout out to Princess and Carlos King for making another one. Y'all let me know what y'all think about the episode. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Don't forget to like the video. Bye.